Stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. apologizes for the temporary shutdown of the Philippine airspace that affected at least 56,000 travelers on New Year's Day. Senator J.V. Ejercito shares concern on the possible restart of negotiations between the Philippines and China for joint oil and gas exploration in the West Philippine Sea. The Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board aims to maintain a two-minute interval of bus arrival in EDSA Busway and to resume the free ride program in February. And the United States pledges to send Ukraine nearly $3 billion U.S. billion in military aid, while European allies also stepped up their weapons commitments as the country push, continues to push back Russian forces. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, January 6, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Kat Maraos. First in the news. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. inspects the present situation at the Nino Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 following the unexpected technical glitch at the Air Traffic Management Center of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has apologized for the temporary shutdown of the Philippine airspace on New Year's Day. His apology came as he inspected the Nino Aquino International Airport or NAIA Terminal 3 a week after the airspace shutdown affecting at least 56,000 travelers. President Marcos Jr. said he discussed with concerned officials measures to ensure that the incident would not happen again. So now, uh, I'm sorry, we, of course, we have to apologize to our kababayans, who, uh, especially those who came from abroad. Dahil Limitado ang kanilang bakasyon, nawala yung dalawa, tatlong araw eh. Uh, alam naman natin, very valuable sa Pilipino yung uh, Christmas holiday. Kaya te, kami naghihingi, humihingi ng inyong paumanin. At uh, ngunit gagawin namin ang lahat na hindi na maulit ito. According to PBBM, among the measures that the government has taken is the emergency procurement of two uninterruptible power supply or UPS units. The president added that they are planning to install backups for the system, although he admitted that this may take a little time but will be fast track. Ang uh, sinabi ko lang kay Sec. Jimmy is to make sure that we uh, fast track all of whatever negotiations we have with our uh, with the partner with the with the equipment suppliers who uh, can help us with the upgrades who can help us with the upgrades both for the software and the hardware of our equipment and beyond that is to have a proper backup system so that if the whole system fails like it did on January 1 we have a complete system ready to go yun lamang that might take a little time but that is something that we will try to fast track as quickly as possible. The chief executive said normal operations have already been restored in the country's airports. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Department of Justice or DOJ Secretary Crispin Boying Remulia disclosed that he is relieved and happy over the acquittal of his son for the complaint of possession of illegal drugs or kush. Remulia stressed that he did not interfere on the case and let the rule of law prevail. He further added he has not yet talked to his son since he was charged. The court has already rendered a decision. I did not interfere with, in any way with the process. I trusted the process. And uh, I wish my son further redemption in the future. Uh, he has to make something out of his life. Uh, something better than what happened to him. Champion, you're, you know, you're relieved, you're happy. But, uh, uh, he had the right to be presumed innocent, innocent in the first place. So I'm just glad that the justice system. 
Department of Justice Secretary Crispin Boying Remulia refused to give some comments over the complaints filed against him by suspended Bureau of Corrections Chief Gerald Bantag at the office of the Ombudsman. Dante Amento tells us why. Justice Secretary Crispin Boying Rimulia believes that the intention of suspended Bureau of Corrections or Bureau Corps Chief Gerald Bantag in filing cases against him before the Ombudsman is something personal. Rimulia has ignored Bantag's complaints. I don't know where the legal theory is coming from. But uh, it's okay. Papa, ano yun eh? He's trying to exhaust all his uh, all, all uh, possible remedies uh, which go against me personally. Rimulia assures to continue performing their job as prosecution and Bantag's cases pending in the DOJ will not be affected. But we'll not change anything. The cases will continue. Uh, we're, our job is to prosecute people. It is, it, the DOJ is primarily a prosecutorial, the prosecutorial arm of the, of the government and nobody else will do it except us. December 27, 2022, Bantag filed a libel and administrative cases against Rimulia. January 4, 2023, another murder case was also filed at the Ombudsman. Bantag accused Rimulia as the mastermind over the killing of broadcaster Percy Lapid and alleged middleman June Villamor. But Rimulia refused to comment further on the issue. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine rice import in 2022 reached 3.79 million metric tons based on the latest data of the Bureau of Plant Industry or BPI. This is double of the import arrival in 2019 when the rice tarification law was started to implement. According to Department of Agriculture under Secretary Mercedita Sombilia, the price of rice may be higher if importation was not allowed. That is good, siguro, kasi Kung wala yung 3 million people with pepe and with all the, the, the rice prices, baka siguro nag-shoot up ang, ang rice prices. Yung importation is not really bad. We just have to balance it. We just have to ano, to, to, ano, to, to uh, make sure na talagang it arrives not during the harvest time. The Federation of Free Farmers project projects that this year, the country would import 3 to 3.4 million metric tons of rice. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, said that prices of rice outside Metro Manila increases by 2 pesos last year. The Farmers Group also projects that prices of rice in the first quarter of the year may increase by 2 to 4 pesos per kilogram. We will still continue importing substantial volumes po ng bigas. Uh, yung presyo po niyan, most likely tataas din yan be, uh, because of the production costs to mataas. The National Telecommunications Commission reminds the public anew that the SIM registration is free. The agency also advises to avoid fake news circulating on social media. Aileen Cerudo will tell us why. Providing information to strangers might be a cause of fraud and identity theft. During a press conference, the National Telecommunications Commission, or NTC, said that SIM users should go to booths of their telecommunication companies for SIM registration assistance. This is amid reports that there are posts offering assistance for SIM registration, but with a price. The agency raises concerns on the matter and reiterated that the SIM registration is free of charge. Merong tamang pamaraan para sila itong ta itong mga public uh, itong public natin na subscriber na pumunta sila sa tamang link ng mga telcos at yun yung tama hindi natin sila na encourage because under the law SIM registration is free yung mag-aassist dapat sa kanila ay yung mismong telco because they are fully qualified and capable to handle the data According to NTC, there are risks in giving out information to strangers, especially with the documents and information required for SIM registration. Meanwhile, telecommunication companies assure that they already resolved the system glitches experienced by the customers during the SIM registration. I'm sure Smart and Global uh, perhaps say the same, that it's about listening to your subscribers 
finding out what the pain points are. And mabilis naman kami kasi uh, yan ang utos sa amin ng NTC really to resolve these uh, small issues uh, rather quickly. Telcos also assured they will continue to optimize the SIM registration process in the coming weeks. Siguro yun sa glitch, it's more of the, the time, the, the time of confirmation. Yun yung ginugusto namin improve, continuously in optimizing the platform, ano, na mabilisan, malikmata lang, confirmation na kaagad. Sagutin ko na, opo, uh, pero hindi kami titigil na i-improve ang sistema natin. Uh, siguro naman, gusto natin mas mapabilis pa at uh, mapaayos pa ang sistema. Kung pwedeng gawing 3 minutes na lang, eh, sana ayusin natin para maging ganun. Eileen Ceruno, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The prices of chicken in Metro Manila markets stay high. Based on the latest data of the Department of Agriculture or DA, prices ranges from 180 to as high as 220 per kilogram of dressed chicken. This is higher than 180 pesos per kilogram of its prevailing retail price in November 2022. According to Attorney Bong In Shong, the president of the United Broiler Racers Association or UBRA, consumers still prefer to buy chicken because it is cheaper compared with other meat. But they expect that after three weeks, the price would go down. Sa ngayon, ang tingin namin ay tumaas talaga ang demand, pumunta, la, pumunta talaga ang mga mamimili sa manok. Dahil magamat tumaas ang uh, presyo niya, ay siya pa rin ang pinakamurang karne kung iahambing sa baboy at saka sa baka. A lawmaker believes China must show sincerity first and regain the Filipinos' trust amid the possible resumption of negotiations on joint oil exploration in the West Philippine Sea. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Senator J.V. Ejercito expressed concern on the possible restart of negotiations between the Philippines and China for joint oil and gas exploration in the West Philippine Sea. This comes after both President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Chinese President Xi Jinping expressed willingness to continue the talks for the potential exploration in the resource-rich region. Ejercito says he finds it difficult to trust the Chinese government as it continues to encroach the country's territory such as the increased militarization in the artificial islands. Well, as long as uh, it will be beneficial to both, hindi yung lalamag na naman sila. No? Um, sorry, pero um, we have to be wary, no? kasi when we reset to back before we adjourn, China is uh, always uh, extending its hand to us. For the senator, China must regain first the trust of Filipino people before the negotiations proceed. They have, they have to show sincerity first and uh, really our trust. Ako, personally, I uh, find it very hard to, to, uh, to trust the Chinese government. For Senate President Pro Tempore Loren Lagarda, while the dialogues are welcome, they must be premised on the 2016 arbitral ruling which validated the country's maritime rights as well as the rights of Filipino fishermen. She also believes that the damages to the country's marine resources must be compensated and there must be respect for the findings of the arbitral ruling. Meanwhile, for Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel, should the negotiations push through, both sides must ensure full transparency. He says this is to ensure that the agreement is compliant to the Constitution. Pimentel adds transparency is vital to gain the support and confidence of the public and to eliminate any doubts that the government will compromise the country's rights over the West Philippine Sea. Eileen Cerudo, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for our news abroad, as Ukraine continues to push back Russian forces, the United States will send Ukraine nearly three billion U.S. dollars in military aid, while European allies also stepped up their weapons commitments. Marvi Dauphin details why live. 
Yes, Marvy? Good evening, Kath. In a meeting at the White House on Thursday, January 6, the Biden administration revealed its largest military package for Ukraine, totaling around 2.85 billion U.S. dollars in an aim to getting as much armor before Russia's new wave of aggression. President Joe Biden and other United States officials said the U.S. would provide Bradleys, Humvees, mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles or MRAPS, additional missiles and ammunition, while Germany will supply martyr armored personnel carriers. Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Pat Ryder highlights that the Bradleys will provide both an offensive and a defensive capability to Ukrainians to be able to change the equation on the battlefield. Shortly after the joint statement from U.S. and Germany, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked the Allies in his nightly video address. Президенту Байдену і канцлеру Шольцу за рішення посилити нашу оборону дуже вагоме рішення. Матимемо ще одну батарею Петріот і потужну бронетехніку, і це дійсно велика перемога для нашої держави. Всі деталі, терміни будуть завтра після моєї розмови з паном канцлером. Meanwhile, Ukraine will receive training on the operation and maintenance for the vehicles, as well as for its first Patriot missile battery, the West's most advanced surface-to-air missile. After last month's delivery of a 1.85 billion U.S. dollar aid package, Zelensky and other Ukrainian officials continue to press Western leaders and partner states for more advanced weapons for its war effort. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Marvi Delfin, reporting live from Australia. Due to the updated measures by the Italian government for charities who rescue asylum seekers at sea, sea rescue charities say these can cause more deaths in the Mediterranean. This tough anti-immigration measures were introduced last week, wherein charity ships must sail to a port without delay after a rescue and not remain at sea to look for other migrant boats that need help. If these rules are not followed, the rescue ships might face a 50,000 euro fine or their boats might be impounded. 17 non-governmental organizations or NGOs such as Doctors Without Borders, CI, Sea Watch and SOS Humanity released a joint statement expressing their gravest concern to Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni who promised to cut migrant flows to Italy. The statement indicates that due to the absence of state-run rescue ships for search and rescue operations, or SAR, NGOs sea rescue operations are overstretched. They also pointed that the Italian government are reducing their SAR's time and they have to take rescue migrants from the sea to distant ports. According to Interior Ministry data, about 105,140 migrants reached Italy in 2022 and the United Nation estimates that almost 1,400 migrants died while crossing the central Mediterranean last year. Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board aims to maintain a two-minute interval of bus arrival in Edsa Busway to give more convenience to the commuting public. JP Nunes will tell us why. From the actual 550 units of bus permitted in the EDSA carousel, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB has revealed that only 80% are actually traveling on the busway. LTFRB Chairperson Chofilo Guadis III said two consortiums of the busway failed to deploy enough buses for commuters. This results to long queue of passengers usually during peak hours. LTFRB said they aim to maintain a two-minute interval of bus arrival in the EDSA carousel. Dapat every two minutes, meron pong dumadating na bus. Pag wala pong dumating na bus, Ibig sabihin po niyan, may kakulangan ang consortium na dapat punuan po ng LTFRB. If the two busway consortiums failed to deploy the actual unit of buses until Wednesday next week, the regulatory board will be forced to deploy additional 50 units of buses which are not included from the said consortiums. Meanwhile, LTFRB said the revival of the EDSA busway free ride will be possible in February. 
the regulatory board is only waiting for the release of 1.4 billion pesos allotted for free ride program this year which will come from the Department of Budget and Management or DBM. Ang timeline ho namin is about February of this year. Itutuloy ho namin yung libre sa na yan. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The active cases of avian influenza or bird flu in the country is now confined in two barangays. This is based on the data of the Bureau of Animal Industry dated December 29, 2022. The total number of barangays where bird flu have been recorded reached 142. Last January 4, 2023, the Department of Agriculture or DA cleared Rizal as bird flu-free province. The areas that also recovered from bird flu include seven municipalities in Camarines Sur, one in Davao del Sur, and in Bataan. Avian influenza usually affects poultry like chicken. The Department of Health will focus more on surveillance monitoring than implementing tighter restrictions against COVID-19. Gladys Tawabi tells us why. The Department of Health or DOH says that the COVID-19 virus continues to mutate among the variants that has been detected in other countries. Is XBB.1.5 COVID-19 known to be most transmissible? However, DOH believes that there is yet no need to implement tighter restrictions in the country. Wala pa mo tayo nakikitang rason based on science and evidence that we should add additional restrictions. Kailangan po natin tignan ang kabuuan ng sitwasyon at hindi lang natin i-focus ang ating pag-iisip at saka pag sa China. We just go through our protocols currently at sa tingin natin ito naman po ay epektibo hanggang sa ngayon. The department will instead focus in doing surveillance and monitoring activities. According to Health Officer in Charge Under Secretary Maria Rosario Virgere, they have already ordered the border units to strengthen its surveillance in every passenger arriving in the country. What we are doing so far is to heighten our surveillance. At yan po ang ating ginawa. Nagpalabas po kami ng order uh, bago po mag-umpisa ang bagong taon kung saan tayo po ay nagbigay ng order sa ating mga border units na pag-igtingi ng ating surveillance. And by doing that, we were able to capture through our usual protocols ito pong mga nai-report na natin na nagpositibo sa antigen who are partially or not vaccinated at all na mga Pilipino na pumasok na galing po sa bansang China. Through this initiative, it will be easier to identify passengers who are vaccinated and unvaccinated and can help monitor variants that may enter the country. To date, the country's protocol for arriving passengers who are unvaccinated or partially vaccinated will be subjected to antigen testing. Under Secretary Verhere reiterated that this protocol is applicable not only to arriving passengers from China, but for every individual. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory. Glory to God. Meanwhile, there were speculations that COVID-19 vaccines are connected or a cause of myocardial inflammation. Myocarditis is an inflammation of the heart tissue, especially the myocardium, the middle layer of the heart wall. It affects your heart's electrical system and muscle cells, leading to irregular heart rhythms and problems with its pumping function. According to infectious diseases expert Dr. Jean Solante, it is not the side effect of the COVID-19 vaccine. He explained that some respiratory infections like influenza and flu can also cause myocarditis and its complication may weaken the inner wall of the heart. The expert advises to continuously follow the health and safety protocols like wearing face masks, social distancing, and frequent hand washing to prevent from harmful diseases that may cause myocarditis. Myocarditis is one of the rare side effects of mga bakuna. But uh, myocarditis is also a common, no? so sabihin ko, common complications of some respiratory tract infections. And in fact, uh, nakita natin dito sa mga data na mataas talaga ang myocarditis during COVID. And it can also be 
part of what we call a long COVID. No? So, siguro isa yan sa mga nakikita natin ngayon, yung mga post-COVID, nag-long COVID, and develop myocarditis. Influenza can also cause myocarditis, yung flu. No? So, during this season, from September, October, November, it's so uh, uh, vulnerable. No? The vulnerable population can also develop these complications of myocarditis because of respiratory tract infections, and I don't think uh, it's because of uh, vaccine. The Department of Health, or DOH, urges the public to continuously follow health and safety protocols to prevent acquiring any contagious diseases and new COVID-19 variant XBB.1.5. DOH also reminds our citizens who still have not been vaccinated to get COVID-19 jabs so that they have resistance against any variant of COVID-19 that enters the country. The health department also urged the public to health to keep wearing proper ma face masks, especially in crowded places, to be cautious in places without proper ventilation, such as market, mall, bus, LRT or MRT, to avoid the threat of COVID-19 variant XBB.1.5. Currently, the DOH's vaccination program is still being continued for the age of 12 to 17, senior citizens with comorbidities, vulnerable sectors, and especially the immunocompromised individuals. So for whatever variants that will come in the country, as long as our people knows how to protect themselves through vaccination and through the compliance to minimum public health standards, we need not worry. And as long as our healthcare system is ready and it is manageable, okay po tayo. After Facebook Philippines removed pages of political groups Anakbayan, Kilusang Mayo Uno, and Bagong Alyansang Makabayan, Anakbayan appeals to have their pages back, while KMU plans to seek lawyer to implement legal measures on the matter. Bernadette Tinoy will tell us why. Political group Anakbayan appeals to Facebook Philippines to have their FB page back. This is after the social media platform removed their page. Uh, Nag-appeal na rin kami sa Facebook um, para maibalik yung page namin. Tapos nag-report din kami kasi very unusual na may mga gustong pumasok sa admin uh, accounts ng mga admin. This case is similar to the removal of Kilosang Mayo Uno or KMU's page on Facebook. According to KMU Secretary General Jerome Adonis, they will concert to a lawyer to help them implement legal measures on the matter. Mga legal measures na po pwede naming gawin, makikipagkonsultahan kami sa lawyer para pwedeng gawin, para kagat naman ibalik yung aming Facebook page. Kasi pati po yung mga, ano, yung mga nag-handle ng account, yung mga personal account nila, ano eh, pinasara din. Meanwhile, other progressive organization affected by FB page removal is Bagong Alyansang Makabayan which condemned the action of the social media platform. Bayan Secretary General Renato Reyes said in a text message that the Facebook has no basis regarding the accusation that the group has allegedly violated. Miranda Adonis and Reyes believe that their respective political groups were shut down as they acknowledged the actions of the late Professor Jose Maria Sison, the founder of the Communist Party of the Philippines or CPP, and their removal of their Facebook pages is a violation of their right to freedom of speech. Yung mga ganito at uh, ang tingin ho namin dito, panibago or dagdag na atake dahil malinaw dito ang nababiolate dito yung aming uh, freedom of speech. As of now, the Facebook Philippines has yet to release a statement on the issue. Bernadettino UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In Vietnam's National Assembly, they have voted two of the country's deputy prime ministers to be dismissed. Jane Robles explains why live. On Thursday, January 5, Vietnam has dismissed two of their deputy prime ministers as new speculations escalates in an anti-corruption crackdown.
The removal of Pham Bin Min and Vuduk Dam were not explained by the parliament, however. The event occurred as the country intensifies its fight against graft. The two prime ministers were not arrested and no charges were filed against them. Min, aged 63, became Vietnam's deputy prime minister from 2013. Dam, aged 59, also became the deputy prime minister in the year 2013 and is widely known for leading the country's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. They have not responded to a request for comment regarding their removal. Kath, if the dismissals are linked to the anti-corruption drive, they would be the most senior officials targeted by the crackdown so far. In other events, a health minister, other top officials and diplomats, as well as prominent businessmen, have already been arrested or detained. Meanwhile, the parliament has ratified the appointment of two new deputy prime ministers, Environment Minister Tran Hong Ha and Party Chief of Haiphong City, Tran Lu Quang. Back to you, Cass. Thank you, Jay Robles, reporting live from Vietnam. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. The Philippine Ports Authority, or PPA, has continued its plan to implement the registration and monitoring of all foreign containers before entering the country. The Trusted Operation Program Container Registry and Monitoring System, or the top CRMS, is a move of the agency that will regulate and provide transparency for various port stakeholders. The program's main objectives is to facilitate transactions with trusted PPA operators, reduce traffic in Metro Manila, traffic visibility, reduce port congestion, and regulate prices of imported products. If top CRMS is implemented, the cost of insurance fee regarding the usage of each container van entering the country will be lowered to 980 pesos and a container staging facility fee will be at 3,520 pesos. PPA's project partner, ShipTech Solutions founder and CEO Eugenio Inyon earlier said that the top CRMS is not to impose any cost that will negatively impact the businesses of service providers but would rather create transparency for all stakeholders that will be enabled to regulate uh, which is the government to question and regulate surcharges to be imposed unreasonably. <music> President Ferdinand Marcus Jr. on Friday, January 6, swears into office General Andres Santino as the head of armed forces of the Philippines or AFP at the Malacanang Palace. Centino replaced previous appointee Lieutenant General Bartolome Vicente Bacaro. The new Chief of Staff is a member of Philippine Military Academy or PMA Class of 1988 and has previously served as AFG Chief from November 12, 2021 to August 8, 2022 and a recipient of Medal of Valor, the highest decoration of the AFP for combat. Presidential Communications Office Officer in Charge Under Secretary Cheloy Garafil shared that Centino implemented four major thrusts within the AFP, which are operational efficiency, optimal use of resources, advancement of professionalism, and meritocracy within the organization and capability development. She also added that the AFP successfully launched military campaigns to combat insurgents and local terrorist groups that caused the dismantling of guerrilla fronts and the clearing of affected communities they occupy. Centino has led all AFP units nationwide in advancing the peaceful and orderly conduct of the national and local elections last 2022. The new AFP, AFP Chief of Staff also graduated cum laude from the PMA and holds a master's degree in business management from the University of the Philippines. Master in National Resource Strategy from the National Defense University in Washington, D.C., and a University of Asia and the Pacific Certificate in the Strategic Business Economic Program. Arkasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day.
to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And those are the reasons behind the news January 6, 2023 reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Live from Bangkok, Thailand, I am Kat Dumaraos. We serve the people, we give glory to God.